we asked our viewers what their favorite Nintendo consoles of all time were. We're going to reveal the results up next. Cue that funky music, Steve boy. It's time for the show. What show, you ask? Show and tell. That's right, everybody. You heard us right in the introductory bumper. This is a special show and tell. Jesse and I are not going to pick our favorite of something. We left that to you guys. So, we have compiled a list from our Facebook fans, our YouTube comments, and our official poll on guildhallforum.com. Tallied them all together and come up with the definitive list of all of your top five favorite Nintendo consoles of all time. But first, before we jump into it, a couple important tidbits. As I mentioned just a second ago, guildhallforum.com is the best place to have a focused discussion about all things gaming. So be sure to check it out. From Animal Crossing to favorite shows to any conversation, it's a good time to have. Indeed, indeed. Second, be sure to check out our Patreon. We've got awesome perks, two tiers to choose from, $3 and $5.00. And all of your contributions help this channel big time. So, and to all of our it. patrons. And we're worth it. Thank you so much. And now, before we get down to the list, one final announcement. Our Facebook, or not our Facebook, I don't know what I'm talking about. Never do. Our guildhallforum.com poll from last month, the month of April, was what is your all-time favorite Nintendo console? And mm. we said, per usual, we would pick one random Uh, poll participant to win a $5 Nintendo eShop gift card. And the person that we chose at random from the poll this time is... Carbon! Congratulations, Carbon. You will be getting your $5 eShop gift card on the forums shortly after you see this video go live. Isn't that what Han Solo was frozen in? Carbonite. Mm. He's just Carbon. Gotcha. Maybe carbon fiber. I'm not too sure. Yeah, you know what I mean? Or he hasn't met the night yet. That's correct. <laughs> that was a really Woo! bad joke. Woo! Yes. All right. Oh, so man. let's get down to business. I'm going to let you reveal the first one. I can see the list from over there, but thanks, Steve. Fair enough. All right. All right. It's time for the top five. So coming in the number five slot, let's hear it. Number five is, well, I say, you know, a very diverse, different, and strange pick for the number five. Number five choice is the Nintendo Wii. Which is super surprising to me. You want to play golf? You know, here's the thing. I, I guess I'm surprised and I'm not surprised. The Wii is the perfect age. You know, it came out in what, 2007? 2000, yeah, 2007, 2007, I think, right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's it's 13 years old now at this point. So there's a lot of viewership that either grew up with that console or whatever. And not only that, but it is the one of the best-selling Nintendo consoles of all time. Actually, it it's the best home console of all time for Nintendo. Mm. So there is a lot of love for it. It's just so interesting to me that a system with motion controls... You know, and it's such a weird control scheme would be you know what? Um, so high on the list. But on top of that, everybody had one. Everybody's grandma had one yeah. and grandpa, and they were using them everywhere. And it was it was the first of its kind. Nobody really attempted anything before that. You know what I mean? It was smart into Nintendo, too. They're like, we can't compete with the 360 or the PS3, you know, graphics or processing power. So let's do something completely different. I know I had one. I loved it. I also had one. And for anyone who doesn't know this by now, which many, many of you probably do because I've mentioned it a few times, I used to have an internet cafe, and we had a couple of Wiis in there, and they were extremely popular, especially with walk-by traffic. People would walk by, look through the windows, and see a bunch of crazy teenagers playing bowl- bowling with an invisible bowling ball and swinging an invisible tennis racket. Mm-hmm. So it definitely did have that global mass market appeal. So... And to be honest, Nintendo's really, I mean, they've kind of gotten away from it, but they still kind of incorporate motion controls in a lot of things. They still do it for, they did it for their very next system, the Wii U, which we talked about. I, I enjoyed that system because it was a regular console and you could use the Wii U or Wii 
you know, controllers with it. And the Switch still has motion control with it. And it may appear on the list that Wii U. Just maybe, maybe not. Just maybe, <laughs> just maybe not. All right. Shall we move on to number four? Yeah. You want me to do number four? You do it. All right. Number four is... I'll do it. But you do it. All right. Number four is interesting because it is the only place in the poll that we have a two-way tie. That's right. Of all three different locations that we polled our fans, we had a two-way tie between the Nintendo Switch and, very interesting, the Game Boy Advance. Woo! Now that is the original original Game Boy Advance and the Game Boy Advance SP. We, we did not, yeah, we did not break them apart because it would skew the voting, so we kept them together. So how about that? That's very interesting. I, I'm not surprised because the SP was the truth when it came out. Do you remember that? Oh, the what? SP was the flip screen, yeah. the backlight. I mean, every they had a backlight. <laughs> you know, the second yeah. version of the backlight on the SP was even better than the first, yeah. but the first one was was still a game changer. Um, and it just had some incredible games to the point where they they still port them to a lot of things. Um, SP was a fun system. The Switch, I'm also not shocked about because that is another great system. I'm shocked that it was a tie. And the Switch wasn't higher on the list. I I'm thought wondering... we would have switched things up. <laughs> See what I did there? No, I did. So, here's my take on it. I feel like the Switch is not higher up on the list, maybe because it's the most recent, so there's not the nostalgia factor. And I think that may have lowered it a little bit. But what I do find super interesting is that the Game Boy Advance, in number four, is also tied with a hybrid console. Which is also True. handheld. Now we could we could debate all day whether the Switch is handheld, a uh, handheld console or a home console. You know, right? We all debate that till I'm blue in the face. But it is regard no matter what your opinion on it is, it is a hybrid. So you can take it with you on the go, just like the Game Boy Advance. And I just find it interesting that there was so much parity in the voting that they both came in with the same amount of votes. I but I'm also not surprised because a lot of everybody had a Game Boy um, just because one, they were affordable. Game Boys have always been affordable. Um, the original Game Boy's MSRP was only 80 bucks. Yep. And on top of that, the SP was, I think it was like one of the, I think you could do with the DS, but you could play original Game Boy games, Game Boy Colors, and the advanced games on it. So, I mean, it was like you could take your library all the way up to that point, you know what I mean? Right. I could play Advance Wars on it, and at the same time go all the way back and play Pokemon Red. Favorite game on the Game Boy Advance? That's a good question. Mine is Golden Sun. Great JRPG. Actually, I may go back and play that now that I've said that because I hadn't thought about the game in like probably two decades. And <laughs> it just popped in my head. There I'm going to have to play it. Um, what was the Pokemon that came out on that? Wasn't that black and white? There was two Pokemons on it, wasn't no, there? No, it wasn't black and white. I was. Um, that's right. Fire Red came out on that, and I love Pokemon Fire Red. Right. Black and white was DS. I remember. All right. So I think we should move on to number three on the list since it's so far away from you. I'm going to put it right here so you can... Read it. We got glasses, Steve. <laughs> Number three on the lists is my personal favorite of all time, the Nintendo GameCube. Oh, we're in the Nintendo Dolphin. Ah, see what you did there. Yes. So that is right. If you recall from the last episode of Show and Tell, Jesse's pick for favorite Nintendo console of all time was the GameCube. And apparently a lot of viewers agree because it has moved all the way up the list to number three. And I suspect it is not because of Jesse's poor pitch, poor sales pitch in that video. Talking about that, I, I might have convinced a bunch of people to go get a game. <laughs> um, so, man, go ahead. It was this was your thing. So you, you no, nah, I just I I'm not I'm I'm surprised it's not number one. But I'm not. Uh, the GameCube was just. You want to talk about nostalgia? I think that is that perfect because what is it's getting up there to almost twenty years old now. Yep, it's got. The whole nostalgia, the games on it were all incredible that we still talk about to this day. And it has some of the most underrated games that people do bring up. Because when Mario Sunshine is mentioned, it's always, that's an underrated Mario game. When uh, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker came out at the time, people were so upset by the looks of it. And now it's regarded as one of the best Legend of Zelda. To the point where it got an HD remake. Here's an interesting tidbit, though. It was third on the list, but it's the second worst selling Nintendo console ever. So how can a console that only sold, what, 25-ish, I don't know the exact number, million million consoles, come in third? The only thing that did worse was the Wii U. Yep. I mean, 
Everything outsold that. The original NES, the Super NES, the 64, every, every, across the board. So it's the, the nostalgia must play a huge role, and the absolute amazing games that were on it must, oh, yeah. you know, as time went on. And I know, Melee a, lot of, and yeah, I know a, lot, a lot of people that got the GameCube secondhand um, because it was, it was at that weird point where, you know, a lot of gamers were growing up in that weird stage where they didn't want to run out and get a GameCube because it wasn't the cool system. Right. You know what I mean? I thought it was. I still got a GameCube first day. So did I. I got the black one. Purple? It's purple. Yeah. And I still have my purple boy. Waited in line at Best Buy. Yep. And then I got, uh, I also have a black one. <laughs> I got a black one when they came with um, Mario Kart Double Dash. Sure. Yeah, so I had two GameCubes. Uh, okay. So, oh, for anybody who wanted to hear the full description of why the GameCube is awesome, Click the iCard above for the last show and tell video where Jesse and I debated what was better, the GameCube or the Super Nintendo. All right, on to number two. Oh, I see it. All right, the second most popular voted by you Nintendo console of all time. <gasps> oh, my heart. The Super Nintendo, baby. Oh, Boom! Yeah. The SNES. Don't do that to me. <laughs> I told you to slap me every time I say SNES, all right? It's Super Nintendo or Super NES. No SNES. It's, it's outlawed. SNES? That's also fine. Okay, again, click the iCard if you want to see the full explanation of why the Super Nintendo was awesome, because it's the last show and tell video we did. Um, but to reiterate, oh my goodness, mm, the prime 16-bit era console. Talk about this like it's a Nintendo, what Genesis don't. I modified the mod. The, the I, I see yeah. what you did there. So anyway, oh my goodness, I am so glad that that rated so high on the list because it shows that I truly got my finger on the pulse, baby. My finger on the pulse. That zeitgeist, the cultural zeitgeist. I will. I even got big vocabulary words for this. I will say I, I hooked up the SNES Classic in uh, my youngest son's room, and uh, he's been playing with it lately. So I've been playing also around with it again. It is a fun system. Comfortable controller. Even these big hands, comfortable controller. Definitely. So good for them. Good Definitely. for you, Nintendo. Okay. They need to put out some more of those classics, too, man. They were great. They, they sure do. I would love a Game Boy Classic. I don't know how they would do it. <laughs> a, I a mean, tiny version of I mean it, would, it could be a decent size or whatever, mm -hmm. but... I mean, I, I guess they, I mean, there's all kinds of knockoff handheld consoles, so as long as they have a decent screen, I mean, I'm sure they could do it for pretty inexpensive. Yeah. Okay. Number one. The number one. Now, there's so many things left on the board. The Wii U, which probably won. Yes. Everybody the, loved the Wii U. The original Nintendo, the the 64, the, uh, what are we forgetting? The, the Virtual uh, Boy, baby. The Virtual Boy, that's definitely number one. Mm -hmm. All of the 3DSs and, and original Game Boy, blah, blah, blah. So, here we go, baby. Voted by you across Facebook, across YouTube comments and across the guildhallforum.com poll, which by the way, check out guildhallforum.com. The number one favorite slash best, whatever you want to call it, Nintendo console of all time. Here we go, baby. What is it? It is the Virtual Boy. That Woo! is a blatant lie. Oh. Try again. <laughs> it is the Nintendo 64. Unbelievable. Wahoo, indeed. Yes. <laughs> I don't think I would have. I don't think I would have ever imagined that that would have got the most votes. I wouldn't have voted for it myself, but I can see that because six Mario sixty four, Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, Kirby Superstar, Mario Kart, Goldeneye, Goldeneye, Double <laughs> Seven. I mean, Perfect Dark, Banjo Kazooie, Conker's Bad Fur Day. Like I love list, Conker's Bad Fur Day. The list goes on for that. Did concert. you say the original Smash? Original Smash Super Bros? Smash Brothers. Yeah. The very first home console ever that had four-player multiplayer without the use of a multi-tap. Yep. Just From the gate. straight out of the box, blip, blop, bleep, bloop, four-player, golden eye, horrible four-player screen. You can barely see. That doesn't matter. I'm, yeah, I, 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 uh, I digress. I digress. But you know what? Golden eye. I hate split screen. Nothing was better than beating somebody with chop, though. You just snuck up on them. Give him a couple good chops. The Nintendo 64, man. Woo, boy. That, I mean... Now you're playing with power, especially if you got the, the, four, mega, the four megabyte uh, RAM expansion. The things they were able to do with that system, too. I mean, 
Resident Evil 2 released on that. Resident Evil 2. On one cartridge, you know what I mean, that had, what, half the RAMs and gigabytes of an actual disc? Resident Evil 2 was two discs. And they were able to fit that entire game. And it looked incredible on that yeah. system. Like, the things that they were able to do in, with that system is incredible. It's just... You know, I think the only real... There's two downsides to the 64. Two big downsides. Uh, one is a hardware-based. is hardware based. Two is, is not. But number one, you know... Sure, the, they had the cartridges, which gave them the, the fast loading times and everything. But it definitely had an issue competing with the the PlayStation mm-hmm. because it didn't have the capacity, right. the, the the data capacity. So you couldn't have the FMV videos. That's why Sony jumped ship with the with the Final Fantasy VII to go to Sony. Yeah. You know, so it was very limited in what it could do, and it, it suffered with third parties because of that. The Super right. Nintendo very had, hard to develop. The Super Nintendo it. had amazing third party support. The sixty four did not. It took years, years for the first. RPG to come out on the 64, and we got Quest 64. Well, the PlayStation got Final Fantasy 7, Final Fantasy 8, you know, uh, Final Fantasy 9, Final Fantasy 9, Final Fantasy Tactics. No, <laughs> no, but they got all kinds of JRPGs, not just Final Fantasy. Mm-hmm. And we had Quest 64. No, but honestly, but I mean that the RPGs aside, and that was the one downside. The, the memory capacity was definitely a, a definite hang up for that system and then the other big problem was since they weren't stamping cds to make those discs they had to make those cartridges the games were so expensive yep. so expensive to this day i have a memory of going into toys r us and buying in usa for 80 dollars 80 for a new game in usa of all games which wasn't even a long game and not only that, but this is going back what fifteen years. Yep. I don't know where everywhere else. I don't know the inflation at this point to two thousand and twenty dollars. But eighty bucks in the year when every other system was forty dollars for a brand new game. I mean, not every game was that expensive. You know, I, I think first party games were still fifty, I, I believe. Yeah. Something like that. But they were still more expensive on on the sixty four. I do remember that seeing the price difference. Unbelievable how expensive those games were when they first came out. But. Say lovey, it is what it is. If you guys hear that stomping upstairs, it's because this is a basement and I have kids. I don't know if you can hear it, but there it is. They're excited about the N64. <laughs> Nonetheless, it's still good. We both had an N64. I think we both still have our N64s. Uh, I know mine's in my basement. They're, they were good systems. Um, you know what I mean? And it's something that's still fun to plug in. And if they release an N64 Classic, I'll be first in line. To pick one up. But it might suffer from the same problem that the PlayStation Classic had, man. Those for those first generation 3D polygonal based games, they don't hold up that well. Mario Mario 64, sure, but a lot of them they just don't hold up, man. Yeah. They're too ugly and they're too clunky to play. Yeah. It's like when you go back to play Final Fantasy VII and you just go, "You are horrible to look." Pixel at. art will always God. <laughs> pixel art will always look good. You know what I mean? Go back mm-hmm. to six. Go back to Super Mario World. That game will always, until the end of time, look pretty. Something like. Blast Corpse for the N64 where, you, you know, you drove the little vehicles around and blew buildings up and the explosions were like 10 polygons that were yep. just like various shades of orange. That game is horrendous looking. Uh, yeah, you can go back like we, we mentioned earlier. Perfect Dark, which is one of my favorite first-person shooters, came out of that. I tried playing that the other day on um, the Rare Collection and that's upgraded on the Rare Collection. Still a rough-looking game to look at. Um, but hey, what can you do? Indeed. I still would pick it up in a second. Well, buddy, I think that just about completes this episode of Show and Tell. Remember to register for the forums, guildhallforum.com. We will have a May poll posted at some point in the near future. Actually, it'll probably be posted uh, when this video goes out. Ooh. So make sure you vote in that poll to give yourself a chance to win a $5 Nintendo eShop gift card. Congratulations to our last winner, Carbon. The $5 right. gift Carbon card will be coming to you soon. Solo, and you won a gift card. <laughs> and be sure to check out our Patreon. Uh, for the Adventurers Guild, this has been Show and Tell. I'm Steve. Still Jesse. And we'll catch you next time.